took a look back at the top Siouxland sports moments throughout the winter seasons, but now it's time to move ahead to the spring and summer months as we continue to call back our memories on an exciting year in Siouxland for part two of the Sports Zone 2022 Year in Review. Despite a frigid spring, 2022 began to thaw out in track and fields. Nebraska heralded over eight total state champions, while Dakota Valley Sophia Atchison grabbed gold in pole vault as our lone Siouxland champion in Rushmore State. But the Blue Oval is where things heated up for Siouxland contenders. The KPWC Quartet brought home its third straight medley win. Sioux City North's Gabe Nash and Yamane Keifel followed it with a pair of first place finishes. And the Spirit Lake tandem of Jack Latham and Kai Hussey traded state titles and personal bests, leading the Indians to a 218 title by a 27 point margin. I didn't know if I would have the energy, but my coaches trained me for this, this moment. And to have the endurance that I had, so yeah. I've lost a few times to Jack. He's beat me like two times. I've beat him. This is my second time. It's, yeah. It was a great accomplishment and a huge uh, personal record for me. And there's no leaving out Sioux City West's Holly Duox. The current Hawkeye won three state titles in the weekend to defend her 4A 100 meter dash crown, showing the Drake crowd she can do it all. Last year I ended with two. And so to add on that second, that third one, and not only get that, but get the number two all time and break 24, it just feels great. On the pitch, Heeland girls punched their state ticket while both the Spencer boys and girls advanced to Des Moines. But it was the Western Christian boys who were nearly the last standing in 2A, finishing as state runners up in back to back years. Arena football, the Sioux City Bandits had quite the turnaround year, taking a 5-5 five five finish in 2021 to a 10-2 mark last spring with the one seed in the CIF playoffs before falling in the conference semifinals to Omaha. But the future looks bright for the Bandits, ushering in a new chapter with Sioux City Mayor Bob Scott appointed the new commissioner of the league while Don Belson took over as franchise owner. I think the coolest thing is that Don's been involved almost as long as me. You know, his family's been involved with this, his daughter, his grandson, since his grandson was born, you know. Um, they started out as game day operations, and now to see him grow to, to an ownership role, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Turning calendars to the summer, Iowa saw Remsen St. Mary's, Newell Fonda, and Sioux Center state bound for softball, all three ending their seasons in the quarterfinals in Fort Dodge. State baseball sent four, with Remsen St. Mary's running the table up to a thrilling 1A state title game, resulting in a runner-up finish, while Esterville Lincoln Central appeared in its first ever 3A state championship before falling to three-time defending champ Van Meter. The GPAC baseball season saw a lot of competitiveness for Siouxland, but none as thrilling as when Briarcliff baseball emerged out of the corn for the first ever collegiate baseball game on the Field of Dreams movie site Diamond. A moving introduction to the Chargers sending balls into the stocks in a 15 to 1 route over Luther. And rounding out the summer in Pro Ball, where the Sioux City Explorers fell one game short of the playoffs despite a red hot June surge. But perhaps its brightest spot of the season came from the dugout, with manager Steve Montgomery smashing a 15 year record with win number 427, becoming the all time winningest coach in franchise history. The players are the reason we won 427. I'm the reason we've lost 300 and some. It's simple as that. They do all the hard work. They serve the community. And I couldn't be more proud of all the hard work these players have done over the last nine years to serve this community and win a few ball games. Thank you. 